like my waffles frozen, man. Frozen! Alright, Bulletproof Tournament here today. I'll be going over some basic color real quick. Monochromatic. It's the most basic part of color theory. It's just using one color and using many different shades of it. So you can have light and dark and mid-tone red here. It's one of the most basic things you can do and you can use any color for it. Next part, this is two point color theory and it goes over complementary colors. If you look at a color wheel, any two colors that are on opposite sides of the color wheel are considered complementary colors. In this case, that would be blue and orange. When I use complementary colors, I typically have one as a base color that is more muted and one as a highlighting and contrast color, just to kind of have more of that dynamic. Here the orange is the highlighting and the blue is the base color. This next one is called the triad, it's three points. On a color wheel, there would be a triangle formed between the three points. Here I have blue, red, and green as my color choice. For a more muted and darker base color, I have blue. For a color that is harmonizing but yet contrasting, the blue here and the main body, I actually have green. The red contrasts with both of them as well, but because it's the most saturated and brightest color, it serves as my highlight color. So moving on from three points to four, this would be a square on the color wheel. It's called a tetrad. This kind of color scheme is most often seen in things like Power Rangers, especially with the Megazord when you see red, blue, green, and yellow, which is a common tetrad color scheme. I tend to not use this as much because it really makes that uh, well-established Power Ranger theme kind of stick to your characters. Though if you're going to use it anyway, I would suggest using three main colors of the four and making them more dominant than the last. The last can be kind of more muted. This next part's about color balance. Typically if you have two colors, you just really want to have a good strong contrast between them. So you'd have one lighter and more saturated and one be darker and less saturated. If you have three, you're gonna have the same one except you're gonna have a third color be more neutral and be like the gray tone so one that's really dark one that's really light and one that's kind of a mid tone also for that one I just happen to use a typical color harmony which is basically multiple colors next to each other on the color wheel this particular color harmony is actually purple red orange and yellow and can be found in nature as part of a sunset here's an example now with these contrasting points I'm going to have the brown here be as a neutral tone color. The green and the purple are actually complementary colors, but my green is more of my dynamic contrast and the purple is the highlighting color. In this case, the purple is also the main body, so the green does serve enough to contrast. I do use a little bit of light green here to also have a contrasting highlight color. This next part is actually one of my favorite things. It's natural color palettes. Our eyes actually become accustomed to seeing a lot of things in nature, even though they don't necessarily fit in with any of the complementary or triads or any of those extra color scheme things we may be thinking of. For example, here I have blue, some kind of tan, brown, and uh, almost coral color, and a little bit of white. For me, that's actually the ocean. We have brown as like a dark sandy color. The skin tone is actually close to a very light sand color. The pink is actually very close to seashells and blue is obviously the water. The white is a little bit of the sky and the clouds, which is a reflection. And just a little bit of the foam from the seawater. This one's another natural palette. This I'm going with some brown, some green, and a little bit of a peachy red orange color for me that's actually kind of a 
flower that you can kind of see out in nature. There will be some light green in this, which is similar to some lilacs and just very light flower colors. This next one's a little bit harder for me to describe. It's something I've been working on. It's called Relative Color Harmony, or as I like to simply call it, localization. What it does is it takes a character or anything you're designing and it breaks it up. And by doing so, it gives you the ability to create a more complex color palette. So Realistically, when we're looking at characters, we don't want to have just three all the time or four as their main color schemes. Because if you think about it, how often is it that you find clothes that are just so perfectly matched in color? A robe that's blue and orange and pants that just happen to be blue and orange, even though they're not from the same place. A piece of armor that just happens to be the right shade of orange to match the blue. Uh, I don't really think so. Can't buy into that. But what this does is actually looks at it differently. Now this is where this new concept called localization comes into play. If you break up different parts of the body and assign each one a dominant color, say the body and then the shoulders and the legs each have a dominant color, then you can actually focus on each area specifically and give them an even more complex color palette. Here on the legs I have yellow, orange, a little bit of blue but red is the dominant color there. On the shoulders it's red and white but red is the main dominant color of that area. There is a little bit of dark purplish blue and then mostly blue and a little bit of white on the body but the main color is blue. There's a little bit of a fuchsia color on the part that's draping over him as well as a dark bluish hair color and as long as all the colors are basically touching each other work out it kind of plays into this whole color harmony idea well I'm Bulletproof Terman that was my first video thanks for watching if you have any feedback questions and suggestions for future videos you can post them below